What impact will the decision to bench Bryce Young have on Dave Canales? We'll talk about it right here on this weekly Wednesday mailbag edition of Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, the part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me. Julian Council on Twitter at Julian Council, where on Wednesdays, like today, throughout the rest of the regular season, I'm going to be answering your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions. And what I need you to do is either at me or DM me. And of course, if you feel like it, follow me on Twitter at Julian Council to get your questions in immediately following all the Panther games. Don't get a question in on a Thursday or a Friday or a Saturday. Wait till after Sunday. Get them in right away, and I'll get to them on Wednesdays throughout the rest of the regular season. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, the days are counting down. All FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. As we know, the news of the day on Monday is the Carolina Panthers have made a decision to bench their Number one overall franchise quarterback, Bryce Young, after 18 career starts. And now Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, will be back in the saddle as the Panthers starting quarterback, at least for this week. We still have no idea whether this is a one-week thing, what it feels like it's going to be a multiple-week thing, and probably a permanent thing as the Panthers have made it known that Bryce Young is not good enough for them right now to win games, and they're probably going to move on from him at some point here in the near future. So it appears that the... Time of Bryce Young here in Carolina as their hopeful franchise quarterback is over after the news that came out on Monday. Was it Dave Canales' decision? Was it Dave Tepper's decision? Was it Dan Morgan's? Brent Tillis? I guess we'll never truly know, but y'all know where I'm leaning towards. I'm leaning towards the man who has run this franchise into the ground, and that is David Tepper. Well, without further ado, let me go ahead and answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions, starting with Dave Canales and what all this means for him. Matthew asking, do you think this move this early means the coaching staff is on the hot seat? We saw just a year ago, 11 games into the season, Frank Reich was fired by the Panthers, by David Tepper. And a big part of that was his lack of development for Bryce Young. But also we saw a lot of things from that team, just penalty wise, that just made you think that he may not be the right guy. He was coming off a season in Indianapolis where he was also fired midseason. Felt like it had kind of passed Frank by as far as the game goes. By the way, made that decision. They brought in Dave Canales, and after two weeks, they've already decided to move on from Bryce Young for the time being. I think probably permanently, but at least for the time being, he's not their starting quarterback. And that's the thing about this that really has me kind of befuddled like I understand like Bryce has been bad so if he was going to keep playing like this at some point in time the Panthers are going to have to make this decision to put him on the bench and to possibly move on permanently I just felt like it would take a little bit more time now how much time can you waste as we saw the frustration from Adam Thielen on Sunday Deontay Johnson's clearly frustrated there was a moment on TV where we briefly saw Bryce interacting with Terry Moten and he had a little look at Bryce being like what, what are you talking to me about right now man so this was gonna be a situation where eventually if he kept playing like this the Panthers are gonna have to do something just to try to not to lose the locker room but the sole reason they brought in Dave Canales and that they moved on from Frank Reich and Thomas Brown, that entire offensive coaching staff and fired Scott Fitterer and went out there and brought in Dan Morgan as a general manager down the hallway, that hallway elevation brought in De Brett Tillis and all the moves they made this off season was to help Bryce Young. So it's kind of interesting that they've come to this conclusion early on. And it's certainly possible that Dave Canales understood that, while he came here to work with Bryce, he also came here to win games, that he's the one who went to David Tepper and talked to him about making the change. It's possible that was the case. I think it's not the most likely scenario, but it's certainly possible that's how things actually played out. But yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. Like Ryan Clark of ESPN, I heard him on Monday. He was talking about how this move actually proves that Dave Canales isn't tied to Bryce Young. I do think that Dave Canales and Dan Morgan are certainly tied to each other, and I felt like those two would be tied to Bryce Young for this season and next season, as I saw this as more of a three-year proposition once they drafted Bryce, really two years for those two, and maybe even three years as that's the end of his rookie deal to figure things out and whether he is the right guy for them, and possibly four years had they exercised fifth-year option. But it seems after two weeks, yeah, maybe he's not tied to Bryce Young. Or... Dave Canales realizes that I'm in trouble because David Tepper is a owner who is always meddlesome and is someone who has shown a lack of patience and an inability to see anything through when it comes to the Panthers quarterback situation or just constant rebuild that we've been going through here over the last four or five seasons in Carolina. And it feels like it's going to take over a decade to get things finally right here at this pace that we're going at currently in Carolina. So we'll see. I don't think that, Canales should be on the hot seat at all. Should he should he be taking some heat for the lack of development from Bryce Young? Possibly. It is kind of wild having sat there and watched Bryce during training camp, and especially that joint practice with the Jets where he looked good to what I've seen the last two weeks against New Orleans and Los Angeles. That's not the same guy. So I don't know what's happening between the years for Bryce Young to look great in practice and then to look terrible once game time comes around. And he has looked far worse under Canales in these games than he ever looked last year. And yet the wonder is that Bryce is that Canales is hit someone else. I don't know. So maybe that he should take some heat there, but still like pretty early for him really to have any sort of criticism. If anything, I saw Mel, Mel Kiper jr. ESPN have a major rant on get up on Tuesday, talking about this situation and saying how he did not play Bryce Young in the preseason. You got a lot of new pieces on offense, and y'all know how I feel about it. I felt like week one of the preseason at New England, they should have played. He could have absolutely had all the backups play and evaluate them. There's no – I see the value, I suppose, in having someone like Jack Plummer get prepared to be the starter, but Jack Plummer's not going to be a starter in the NFL. And a lot of the guys that started that game also are never going to be starters in the NFL. So what value do they need to have to go through what it's like to be a starter when they're not going to be starters in this league? So that made no sense to me. The Jets game made more sense because they had joint practices, maybe play a series, but they only get one series in, and then this is how he's played. You have to question Dave Canales' decision then and now, considering how things have played out here in Carolina. But I don't know, just based on what we saw, if the preseason was going to help Bryce, because even in that preseason game against the Bills twos and guys who did not make the team, he was not this bad. So it, it's tough, but we'll see what this means for Dave Canales. What it means is he's got to go show that the offense truly was struggling because of Bryce, and he's got to get this team to be more disciplined, and we'll see what that defense is able to do, if they can be competitive moving forward the rest of this 2024 season. Uh, I got another question here. Did not get this person's name. Again, y'all, whenever you DM me, I know you have some random handles where you don't really have your actual name. Just go ahead and let me know what your first name is so I can put that out here on the show. But uh, this person asked, do you believe the move to bench Bryce could be about evaluating the offensive scheme and new skill player acquisitions of Deontay Johnson and Xavier Lee get? In addition to not losing the locker room, I feel – it's about evaluating Canales now more than Bryce. I believe Bryce could rebound, but after two weeks, he has shown nothing to prove how he can improve, not to mention he's not willing to push the ball down the field in space of field slash defense out. Yeah, and I, I talked about this on Sunday. He was taking all the short stuff, whether that was the coach scheming it that way or whether it was the quarterback making that decision. We didn't see Bryce Young throw the ball down the field, and the only time he really did, he got intercepted over the middle when trying to get the ball to Deontay Johnson. And he, he has been unplayable. The offense has not been functional. And that is a pretty good point that this person brings up, that how are you going to evaluate the rest of the team if Bryce Young is playing this bad? Because offensively, I think we can evaluate that the offensive line has been pretty good when it comes to pass blocking. Now, it's interesting when you look at pro football focus, their pass blocking stats of the Panthers, the fifth best in the NFL through two weeks. Then you look at ESPN's pass block win rate they're like 29th in the league I don't know which one to believe but I know what I saw the last two weeks and it's that Bryce Young has not faced a lot of pressure so I'm inclined to uh, believe what pro football focus has put out there as it's not like Bryce has been under siege like he was throughout the entirety of last season he has had pockets that he has just not trusted and I bet that's a part of frustration that we've seen from a guy like Taylor Moten on Sunday during that brief encounter with Bryce Young on the sideline so yeah like offensive line you can evaluate them they're doing a decent job run blocking not the best job and they're doing a good job protecting the quarterback and as far as receivers are they open i think so and you saw jay feely on the broadcast on sunday point out that 
oh, well, where's he going to go with the ball? This is a coverage sack. But he's like, oh, wait, never mind. Adam Thielen's wide open. And then that's when we see the Adam Thielen meltdown on Sunday, which really was a red flag where, oh, wow, we may already be done here two weeks into the season when it comes to the Bryce Young, Dave Canales experiment here in Carolina. So, yeah, I, I think that. In order to know what you have in get, who did not get a single target on Sunday, to know what you have in Deontay Johnson, you know what you have in Thielen, and the rest of the offensive, at least passing talent and receiving talent, then, yeah, you, you needed to make this change. And about the locker room, losing a locker room, like that was going to happen eventually, and maybe it was already happening. I'm just having a hard time believing after two weeks and him being named a captain, and I brought this up even before the name captains, it seems like every NFL starting quarterback's named captain. Does it actually mean he's a leader or is it just what happens because you're the quarterback? It feels a lot like it's just what happens when you're the quarterback. And someone asked me, does this mean that Bryce Young, who's still a captain, does he go out there during a coin toss? I guess so, man. That's that's going to be embarrassing for him. I feel bad for the guy. You, you would kind of rather just strip him of a captaincy at this point in time. But I suppose there's a reason they named him their leader, probably mainly because he's a starting quarterback. But that's where we're at right now with it. So, yeah, if he was going to continue to play like this at some point in time, they were going to lose the locker room. And Canales maybe already saw it happening, the cracks, and decided let's go ahead and do this. Or, of course, David Tepper stepped in and said, I've seen enough. Get him out of here. Let's see the red rifle. All right, so let's take a quick pause here. I'll come back and I'll answer more of your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions here on Locked on Panthers. Football is finally back, which means it's time to order your favorite game day food, snacks, drinks on DoorDash without missing a play. My ultimate spread on game day is always just a large pepperoni pizza. Throw some sausages on there. I'm an, I'm a mushroom guy. I know. Maybe you don't like mushrooms, but that's that's what I'm going for. Then give me some wings. I always love dry rub. Give me some blue cheese, some celery, some carrots, some chips there on the side. Then after the game's over, when I kick my feet up, enjoy a little bit of that 4 o'clock action going on on Sundays because Panthers usually always play at 1, grab open a beer, and, man, that is the ultimate spread for me on game day. Use promo code LOCKEDBALL24 for 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 plus on your first order. Limited time offer. Terms apply. Promo is not valid for orders containing alcohol. DoorDash, your door to game day greatness, your door to more. Download the DoorDash app now to order your game day favorites. Must be 21 and over to order alcohol, drink responsibly, alcohol available only in select markets. You've heard me talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Well, we have something a little different for you, and we've had this for a couple of weeks now, and I'm hoping because the countdown is on, y'all, now through September 22nd. All FanDuel customers, meaning that could be you, can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday out of afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. I have already told you and extolled the virtues of YouTube TV. I've had it for years. I love it. And now that you have Sunday ticket, why not make the switch and also $5 bet? That's all it is. Three weeks free trial. Go ahead, get in on that. All you got to do is just visit bandle.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Let's get back to it. The weekly Wednesday mailbag here on Locked On Panthers. Now going over to Ian, who says, do you think the coaches and other players were as blindsided with how bad Bryce was the first two games as fans were? I know plenty of people think he's always been a bust, but even last year when he was getting pressured and sacked every week, he was able to hit open receivers a few times. He got to them. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I have to imagine they did. I just, again, man, I, I was there for half the training camp practices and we saw the game, the series, <laughs> that one drive against Buffalo. And that's just not who we saw when he was under pressure against Buffalo. He ran out to the left and threw the ball to Deontay Johnson. And it was a strike. He's had an opportunity several times. We just saw it on Sunday and completely miss. I, I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened to him in between the end of the preseason and in the start of the season. But really, it probably dates back to last year and all that he went through, getting sacked 
62 times, tying a franchise record. Steve Berline had the same total back in 2001. The fact that he didn't have an offensive line that was healthy. And if they would have been healthy, I think if Christensen and Corbett play the whole season with Bozeman there at center, like they're going to be a lot better than what they were last year. The biggest problem was they just weren't healthy. And that's part of the reason why I've said, I don't know if the Panthers necessarily need to spend the kind of money they spent on Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. I get that they have definitely upgraded the talent there in the interior by at least taking Christensen out of the starting lineup and putting him on the bench and probably also swapping Corbett, uh, Bozeman of Corbett. But still, the main issue was they were injured and they didn't have depth, which – no team in the NFL. Hey, look, go watch the Rams this year. All the injuries they've had in the offensive line, go see how they play now. That's They're going to have problems because they had a bunch of their starters get hurt, and they likely don't have enough depth to, make, to overcome it. And that's what happens when you have a salary cap league and you only have 53 guys active on the roster, 46 active on game. Like That's, that's just what's going to happen. So that plays into what we've likely seen so far this season. All that he went through last year, the – confidence just being destroyed by that you thought with the positivity and a new scheme and all that they've done this offseason to help him that he wouldn't look like this but yeah you got to imagine that they got to be a little bit blindsided maybe they're not if, if dave canales really did make this decision possibly he foresaw this happening but if he did then like why start him because i guess well you were brought in here to fix him it's yeah, it's it's tough. It's really hard to understand. I mean, I I understand in a way why how we got here and probably what happened, but it still is jarring when this is not the Bryce Young that we saw, and this is a big reason why we get to the preseason. We we talk about training camp, and I feel like it's all a bunch of wasted breath because you got to do it on Sunday, man. And I was excited about a lot of things I saw as far as, I mean, I didn't think it was going to be a good football team, but there are things that I thought they would be better at the through two weeks. Like that has not come to fruition at all. Like I thought they'd be better against the run. They've been hellacious. I thought Bryce Young would be much better. He has been, of course, even worse. Yeah, I'm blindsided. I'm sure that they got to be at to some degree. Maybe maybe they saw it a little bit, but man, I, I don't know. Uh, Geo. How much do you think Bryce's personality slash style of leadership was a factor in possibly losing the locker room in a starting spot? I mean, I get this question. It feels like all the time because Bryce Young is not one of these rah-rah guys. And I, this comes from the nine years of Cam Newton being here and just his big personality. And I get it. Cam was fun. He was polarizing for whatever reason, but he was fun. And I, I mean, I know why he was polarizing, but he was he was fun. And he was uh, verbose. He had no problem being who he was. And that was a personality that his teammates flocked to. And a large portion of the fan base was able to flock to as well during those nine years. And it has been different when you've gone from that to really think about the quarterback Panthers have had recently. It's not like Teddy Bridgewater was outspoken. P.J. Walker, neither was he. I, we, like Crowd never got a chance anyways, but I mean, not really. Sam Darnold, another quiet guy. Now we did see him pretty fired up after the game in the locker room um, against when Minnesota beat the 49ers. So you can see that right there, he has the fire in him. And I mean, Bryce Young has not been like Baker was, but it wasn't like Baker was here that long to really show that personality. So I don't think that's a factor. I don't, his personality, his leadership style. I don't think, I mean, again, they voted him captain like two weeks ago. So I don't think that was a factor, and I don't think he lost the locker room. I asked somebody on Tuesday, did Bryce lose the locker room? They told me they don't think that's the case, and they also told me that no one in that locker room seemed to be super broken up about it. And maybe to you that means he lost the locker room, but two weeks into the season, two weeks after, less than two weeks after being named a captain, it's really hard for me to believe that he lost the locker room that quickly. Jevin. Asking, is benching Bryce showing the clearest indicator yet to the Panthers' leadership? Cough, the Teppers, <laughs> sorry, <clears throat> Teppers have no confidence in their own long term strategies with the team. After giving up so much to the team, number one pick, they spend then spending so many resources building around Young, benching him in week two seems to me like an indicator that they have no commi commitment to a long strategy. No, they don't. And I mean, I, I, I don't, I guess I, I don't know if I went over this yesterday, but I, one of the first episodes I did. Was talking about how I didn't think Sam Darnold made a lot of sense. And I felt like the Panthers should just rock with Teddy Ridgewater. And I get it. He's not that good. Like, Teddy's out of the league right now. He went to Denver, wasn't much better. And really wasn't like Darnold was better that year anyway. So, 
I felt like you got a quarterback who's capable. You can your offense can function. Like we have seen Bridgewater here, a functioning offense. And then we've seen the last two weeks, Bryce Young playing a non-functioning offense. So I think now we can all understand, like we know what great quarterback play looks like. That Cam MVP season, I think 2017 as well, and years prior to that, he also was pretty daggone good. And we've now seen pretty mid seasons, like what you saw with Bridgewater. I mean, Kyle Allen for a period of time, even though he's turned the ball over a ton of times each week. And then we've seen like how bad it can really get with Bryce Young the past two weeks. So Bridgewater is functional. You had a functional quarterback. They should have focused on building the overall roster. And then when it made sense, put the quarterback in there. People bring up Kansas City all the time and they sat at Mahomes, but like they were a playoff roster that he stepped into. Same thing with Buffalo. All those years, the Bills not going to the playoffs. They were a playoff team with Tyrod right before they drafted Josh Allen. You got to give these guys opportunities and drop them in there. And they didn't give up a ton of assets in order to be there. Like San Francisco was already a playoff team. I already been in the Super Bowl and they gave up all that to get up there. And, and I guess they understand that, you know, only for them to be able to get a quarterback that high, they would have to give up a lot of assets, but we've seen but San Francisco didn't work. hasn't worked right now in Carolina, Denver, what they gave up to get Russell Wilson. That has not worked out with them. Uh, what Cleveland gave up to get Deshaun Watson from Houston, from Houston, the roster building from those teams standpoints have not made a lot of sense. Like the Browns still made the playoffs, but they did with Joe Flacco, the Broncos stink. And so far it doesn't look like Bo Nix is any good. Uh, the 40 Niners, they were already a playoff team anyways. And they got lucky that Brock Purdy is that guy. And that Kyle Shanahan knows the hell he's doing. And they've built a good roster. It's just one of those things where they have not seen anything through. Tepper couldn't stand the 13 games they had to watch Teddy Bridgewater, and they wanted to move on. They couldn't stand what they saw from Sam Darnold, even though when you give up a second, fourth, and six, and then exercise fifth-year option, which I had no problem with them doing. Because if you're going to give up that amount of capital, of course you should exercise fifth-year option and make it a two-year proposition where we're bringing him here because we feel like with Joe Brady – with Christian McCaffrey, with DJ Moore, that he's going to be in a better position than he was up there in New York with the Jets. That was a thought process. That's why they gave up that. So, of course, you give up the, you exercise fifth-year option. And I get you hadn't even seen him play, but it made sense. But you got to give him two years, and they didn't do that. They gave him a season. They brought in Baker. Baker won the job because, of course, he's going to win the job. And Sam, of course, he was hurt, but still, he was hurt as a second-team quarterback. And when he came in and played, he actually looked better until he turned into a pumpkin at the end of those last two games against Tampa and against New Orleans. But they just never been willing to see anything through. So, yeah, this is just another indicator that they have no confidence in any long term strategies. And at least they seem to have a plan when they trade up to get Bryce Young. They made it very clear to all the free agents. We're getting a rookie quarterback and they built Brian the staff they had work at quarterbacks. And we knew what they were, what they wanted to do, that they want to bring in a rookie. They wanted to build around him. They knew a great job of it that first offseason. But this offseason, it was very clear what their plan was. It was to build around Bryce Young. And after two weeks, we're back to square one, where they need to find a quarterback. And this is clearly one of the worst rosters in the NFL. I've seen a plenty of people out there nationally talk about how bad this roster is. And I agree. Like, Derek Brown's a great player. I think J.C. Horn is, but he has not played enough for people to know and really for us to sit here and to talk great about him all the time because he's got to be on the field. But offensively, like, think about this. Teddy Bridgewater, who do you have to throw to? D.J. Moore, Curtis Samuel, Robbie Anderson, who had 1,000 yards that season, and even McCaffrey for a little bit. Look at what Bryce Young has this year. Deontay Johnson, been a pro bowler, okay, but is he better than any of the guys? That I, used? I mean, is he better than D.J. Moore? No. Is anyone of the running backs here better than Christian McCaffrey? No, like they they had some really good talent back in 2020. And now look what they have now. Like who scares you on this offense? Who scares you on this defense aside from Derrick Brown? Not really a lot of guys. So they got a long way to go. And we'll see if they'll see it through. But they certainly have not been willing to see through the quarterback strategy here. And we'll see if they're willing to see through whatever the long-term strategy is now here in Carolina as we're back to square one just based off of this decision that we saw play out on Monday. All right, now I'm going to take another quick pause, then come back and answer the rest of your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions right here on Locked On Panthers. 
Football season is back, and the best way to get to games this fall is with Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Game Time Picks curation makes it easier to save on more sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. And one of my favorite features is the panoramic view from your seat in the app so you can see exactly Exactly where you're going to sit before you buy. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for twenty dollars off your first order. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Lockdown NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. All right, a few more questions, and I got a lot of questions in this week, and I appreciate everybody for being willing to send in questions. I know that uh, times get frustrating, and there's times where the mailbag is dry, and hopefully we can keep getting some robust mailbags. So appreciate everybody asking questions. I have gone back and tried to answer all the questions that I may not have answered here on the show today, and a lot of them also can be repetitive. As we know, the common theme here on the podcast today has all been about the Panthers benching Bryce Young. What does that mean for the Panthers moving forward? What does it mean for Bryce Young, Dave Canales, all of that? And these questions have all been kind of sent around it, but also different. So I appreciate everybody for getting the questions in. So at me, DM me on Twitter at Julian Council. Follow me as well if you'd like to and get the questions in next week. Go ahead and do it after the game on Sunday. Another question from somebody whose name I did not get asking, is it possible for Bryce to sit for the rest of the year and have Canales develop him for the remainder of the year, draft an edge next year because the whole team needs help, and then try Bryce next year and draft a quarterback if it doesn't work out again, or will the front office just cut bait and move on? Uh, I feel like they're probably just going to cut bait and move on. And But yeah, it, it is. you're asking, is it possible that they sit him the rest of the year and develop and he develops on the bench. Yes, it's possible that they do that the rest of the season. Like, I feel like that's probably what's likely to happen the rest of the season, that he will be back there. And I got a question right here from Rod as well, just kind of asking about the situation where he says, do you see the Panthers acquiring another veteran quarterback like Ryan Tannehill? If Bryce isn't good enough to be on the field, he doesn't provide much value like QB2. And I agree with Rod's assessment there. And let's go back to the Jets situation a couple of years ago of Zach Wilson. And someone actually put out the – net EPA stats from Zach Wilson and Bryce Young through their first 18 games. And Bryce Young was, was worse than Zach Wilson. So that's not great at all. Cause Wilson was terrible and is terrible at least so far early on in his NFL career as he's now the third stringer in Denver. But when the jets bench Zach Wilson, he wasn't the backup. He was a third string guy. Like they did not want him playing at all. I want to say that early on they had him as a backup, but then they're like, actually, no, 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 we because something happened, and I think Mike Whitehead got hurt and he had to play, and they're like, no, this guy needs to be our third string. We cannot have him out there at all. Like they eventually got to the point where, no, we don't want him playing. Like we need him to sit. We do not need him to be out there as a potential player. Now, if you want to have Bryce Young be your emergency third quarterback and bring in a vet, like that would make sense. And I was on WCNC, uh, the local NBC station, on Monday night, talking with Nick Carboni, the sports director there about the situation here with Bryce being a backup. And I, and I told him that it would make sense to me that they would bring in someone else. Like, if you think that he's not someone who can help you win games right now, then he's not going to help you as a backup. Like you need, if you want to do a complete reset, get this guy to sit, which they have not told us whether it's a reset and they want to get back to him later on. Dave can is not answering this question. So that's just not beneficial to me or for it, for you or anybody. Over the organization, which I know the players know that what's happening, but the fact that it's not transparent enough to let it, like, what is the situation? Are you done? Are you going to go back to him eventually? Like, we don't know. But if from what I've heard and what I've seen, it feels like they need to bring somebody else in and let Bryce be QB3 and really just be that emergency guy. Um, but looking at as far as your approach there to the person asking me this other question, like, I, as I said earlier, like I, I feel the same way I felt back in 2020. They got to just build the overall roster. And if Dalton can come in and like he played well last year in that game against Seattle. If Andy Dalton can play like that, he's not going to throw for 350 yards every game, of course. But if Andy Dalton come out and have the offense functional, allow them to be able to evaluate what they have at receiver, to be able to be functional offensively, be able to watch the defense, actually get a break, not to be on the field all the time, even though I think the defense sucks anyways. Uh, but if Andy Dalton's able to go out there and, you know, look good enough, maybe you bring him back next year because – this is not a team that's close to contending for anything. 
Clearly, they're bereft of talent. They need to acquire talent. If you're still in the top five, you're bad. Trade back. Get assets. Keep stacking talent on the roster that's young and develop them and get them on the field. Like, looking at how things are at right now, like, Trevor Wallace, he needs to play. He needs to play. Like, get him out there. If this thing goes sideways, start playing him because that guy's for next year anyways. Chaw Smith Wade, play him. Let's see what he can do. Whenever Brooks is healthy, yeah, I mean, why not? Give him an opportunity to get some licks in in the NFL. Like, start playing some of these younger guys if that if it's going to go sideways. But, yeah, if Dalton can play well enough for them, then maybe you bring him back next year on a team-friendly deal as your starter and just keep building the roster and then maybe you get to 2026 and it makes sense to get a quarterback then. But they just, they got to get this roster right first, man. They really do. It's, they got to stop trying to chase after a quarterback. I understand the Panthers need to have a quarterback. Well, this is a line of scrimmage game and they sucked on the line of scrimmage the last couple of years. The offensive line has been terrible. Now, when it's been healthy, it's been good. But when they have not been healthy, they have not been good at all. And they've also had a lack of depth. Like that offensive line now looks better, which is good. It looked like they have better depth, which is good. But you're going to lose Christensen after this year. And do you have guys behind him? The uh, starters right now that you feel confident in. And there's still questions about Ikea Kwanu, of course, but feels like they're in a good spot there. Defensive line, aside from Derrick Brown, it's it's atrocious. It is. And like linebacker, long term, what are you going to do? Like Shaq, maybe on after this year. We'll see what they would do with Josie Jewell. But Trevin Wallace is supposed to be next in line. Like in the secondary, all three of the safeties that they have are going to be free agents after the season. I mean, they could move off of Jane Jackson after this year, Mike Jackson as well. They got a lot of questions as far as defensively that they're going to have to fix. Guys are going to bring in. They have no edge rush at all. They got a lot of problems outside of just the quarterback. Get a quarterback right now who's a veteran like Dalton who can be functional and help them at least evaluate and be competitive and just focus on building a roster. It's just you got to stop cutting corners. I'm just so sick of it because we're here every year because they just won't be patient. And we finally saw in the draft. The strategy seemed to be, okay, let's get some guys who can help us down the road. Let's not necessarily go out there winning right now. So let's see if they keep that approach of Dan Morgan you know, with Dave Canales or if they decide, nope, we can't wait. We got to get a quarterback because you got to be in constant pursuit of a quarterback. And if you don't have a quarterback and win your Super Bowl, then blah, 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 blah. <sighs> All right, Jose. After seeing the Panthers bench Bryce Young, my thoughts began to wonder about trade viability moving forward. However, my simpleton brain is wondering, that's his words, y'all. Uh, my simpleton brain is wondering how you go about increasing value for a depreciating asset. Obviously, there's a lot of factors involved, such as a team like Miami willing to overspend out of desperation, but throw out that scenario. Well, we have seen on Tuesday that Tua Tunga Baloa is going on IR. They have Skylar Thompson, and they just signed Tyler Huntley off of the Ravens practice squad. So they are clearly not a team that's going to be interested in trading for Bryce Young. And I don't know what use they have of Bryce Young at this point in time. Now, whatever team would trade for him would have to take on the remaining $10 million of his salary, which is good start backup money. I don't think Bryce Young right now has proved to be a good backup, but in that situation may help him. Now, looking in the past, as I'm going to Google this live, Trey Lance, when he was traded, they got a fourth round pick. And when Zach Wilson and Trey, Trey Lance barely played, like I still don't even know if Trey Lance is any good. Zach Wilson, when he was traded, it was a late round pick swap. So it was a seven round pick. The, the Jets sent Wilson in a seven round pick and they got back a six. So they got a six rounder. I had to send a pick to get one back. But so we're looking at a fourth, fifth, or sixth. It's going to be a day four pick that they'll be able to get for Bryce Young potentially. But the dif difference is, man, like Lance has the physical physical traits. Zach Wilson had a physical traits. Bryce Young is an outlier quarterback just at his small stature. And you wonder if there's just going to be teams who saw him. And I think most of these teams see the fact that the Panthers are a complete clown show of an organization and that they set the kid up for, for failure. But also, they're going to think to themselves, hmm, but he also struggled, aside from that, maybe because of his limited arm strength and his lack of size, that may impact it. But if Zach Wilson was able to garner a sixth-round pick, no way you can't get something for Bryce Young, even though like he's been, according to EPA, just as bad through the first 18 games of his, of his career. I mean, actually a little bit worse than Zach Wilson was with the Jets. But he 
I don't know, man. We'll see. I think they can get something. And then I got Greg final question here asking, uh, should the Panthers call Pittsburgh to see if Russell Wilson is available or stick with what they have until the end of the year? I don't think they call Pittsburgh. Um, the Steelers actually could save $1.2 million by trading Wilson. The Broncos, of course, are having to cover the rest of that bill after they got rid of Russ and kind of did him dirty. Uh, but right now, Russ is dealing with a calf injury. And Justin Fields is going to start for the third straight week. Steelers are 2-0. Oh, are they 2-0 oh because Justin Fields? Not necessarily. That defense has been outstanding, and the running game has been good. Uh, I don't think Pittsburgh is ready to move off of. I would guess. I mean, first off, you're not trading for a player who's not even healthy. That's stupid. And then secondly, like, is Pittsburgh ready to just go ahead and declare Justin Fields their guy and to let Russell Wilson go? Like, wouldn't they want to have the backup for Wilson, or for um, for Fields and Russell? I don't think they need to trade any assets for a backup quarterback at all. If you want to go and sign someone like Tannehill off the street, that's fine. Stop giving up draft assets. That's part of the reason why you're in this mess in the first place because you keep mismanaging your draft funds and you keep drafting just duds and you keep having no patience. The quarterback, stop doing that. Stop. So, no. Should not be interested in an injured player or interested in giving up any draft compensation for someone who's clearly washed, and that's Russell Wilson. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Lockdown Panthers podcast, part of Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly. Julian Council, getting y'all subscribe, follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, and be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council. Again, uh, y'all, uh, well, I guess actually, you know, in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole, as always, keep pounding, and then I'll be back with you on Thursday, as we're going to be talking to the host of Locked On Razor Raiders for our Locked On Crossover Thursday. So stay tuned for that on Thursday's show.